Will the bimodal verification accreditation system lead to credible elections in Nigeria? We'll take a look at the new technology being deployed by Nigeria's Electoral Commission for its forthcoming general elections in 2023. And the Oshun State Police Commissioner has ordered the disbandment of the state's surveillance squad. Why is there still police brutality in Nigeria? We'll look at the bizarre incident that led to this disbandment. And of course, we'll have in-depth analysis of the headlines of today's national dailies right ahead on The Breakfast. Very good morning to you. We're back with a breakfast right here on Plus TV Africa. My name is Kofi Bartels. It's a brand new week of interesting discussions and in-depth analysis right here on Plus TV Africa. We're on DSTV channel 408 and on Star Times, of course, channel 308. You can also watch us live on our YouTube channels, Plus TV Africa and Plus TV Africa Lifestyle. Let's, um, before we get into the thick of things, let's look at what's been generating conversations on the social space right here in Nigeria and around the world. And there have been more wins. Uh, for the Nigerian contingent to the Commonwealth Games holding in Birmingham in the United Kingdom uh, for the year 2022. Uh, records being broken. Uh, like we say in Nigeria, they're giving the people joy. Yes, indeed. And uh, let's just take a trip to Birmingham and see what transpired in the latest set of races when Nigeria broke records and uh, athletes won medals. Watch for Amazan. She's fourth from the left-hand side. Tapper's got away well, and Amazan's under a little bit of pressure. Now beginning to pull away the world champion, the world record holder. She's on her way to a successful title defence. Sembers on the podium, and so too Charlton of Bahamas. Their first medal, 12.129. Come at the hour, come at the champion. It's a successful title defence and a games record by a country mile. Amazon is on fire this season and she has forgotten how to lose. Brilliant by the Nigerian, simply brilliant. Well, 12.29 is special, ending under 12.3. Yes, indeed. You can see uh, Nigeria's Tobia Musa there. Um, you know, breaking records and winning. She has uh, been a champion at the world stage as far as the 100 meter hurdles uh, is concerned. And she won the 100 meter hurdles uh, for Nigeria, uh, clinching the gold medal in the 100 meters, women's 100 meters hurdles at the 2022 Commonwealth Games. Fantastic performance by the Nigerian contingent and the Musa was not only uh, uh, did not only win the two the hundred meter women's hurdles, she also won the hundred meter relay four by hundred meter relay uh, right there in the Commonwealth Games. Fantastic performance by the Nigerian contingent, and of course um, we had the Nigerian men also clinching uh, the bronze medal the bronze medal uh, from that four by one hundred meter race. Uh, of course, um, uh, several, several, several awards being won by the Nigerian contingent. The men clinching the gold medal and the women clinching, of course, uh, the women clinching the gold medal and the men clinching the bronze medal. Apart from Toby Amosa, um, apart from the 100 meter, uh, 4 by 100 meters uh, gold, and then for the women and the 4 by 100 meters bronze for the men, you had Ese Brume winning gold for Nigeria in the women's long jump uh, at that Commonwealth Games, uh, she had a jump, no jump on her first attempt, but bounced back right away uh, to jump 6.99 meters to take the lead in the final and set a new games record. So it's not just about winning medals for Nigeria. Uh, you have these athletes also setting records. Um, Tobia Musa set a record uh, the, in the 100 meter hurdle. The 4 by 100 meters team also set a record, and you have uh, AC Brume setting a record as well. In the powerlifting, heavyweighting, there have been medals won, and there have been uh, a record set. It's been fantastic. Um, uh, Brume's heroics coming, like we said earlier, on the same day, her friend, Toby Amosa, uh, also set a new games record for the 100 meter uh, had a fantastic performance and of course Nigeria currently sits at a very very pretty position uh, winning 12 
gold medals so far, nine silver and 14 bronze. 12 gold medals so far, uh, nine silver and 14 bronze. Last time I checked, uh, Nigeria had gotten uh, to the sixth position only uh, to be pushed down a bit uh, by uh, by Scotland. And you can see some of the pictures there. It's such, this is a four by 100 meter uh, uh, relay team, I believe. Uh, it, it's such a joy to see that, um, you know, these athletes are bringing the nation a lot to, uh, a lot to, 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 to be happy about and to also celebrate fantastic, fantastic uh, uh, performances right there you know, in the Commonwealth Games. And uh, yes, this is the four by 100 meter uh, team. Yeah, that's a four by 100 meter team that won the gold medal there. Um, the men are also doing their bit, four by 100 meter bronze. I mean, Nigeria coming ahead of countries like uh, uh, Jamaica, countries like, um, you know, South Africa. It is quite a joy, quite a joy indeed. Uh, and long may it continue. Uh, we want to see that these athletes will be encouraged these athletes will be, you know, harnessed, you know, and of course they will be encouraged to do more, to do more, to do more. Um, you saw before now the 4 by 100 meter bronze winning team right there at the Commonwealth Games 2022. For the medal table, Australia came top. I mean, the Australians are bragging. I happened to come across a video yesterday where, you know, there's a rivalry between the Australians and uh, the British. And so they were bragging that they were going to go to the UK and uh, defeat England in their own backyard and bring it home in their words. Indeed, the Australians topped the table with 66 gold medal, 55 silver, and 53 bronze. Uh, England came second. These are the hosts came second with 55 gold medals, 59 silver, and 52 bronze. Uh, you had Canada coming third with 26 gold medal. They had 31 silver, 34 bronze. New Zealand came fourth with 19 gold medals, 12 silver, and 17 bronze. India came fifth with 18 gold medals, 15 silver medals, and 22 bronze. Like I said, Nigeria was in the sixth position, but uh, uh, in a couple of hours, Scotland won an extra medal to push the country down. So Scotland came sixth with uh, 12 gold medals, 11 silver, and 26 bronze, while Nigeria came seventh uh, with 12 gold medals, 9 silver, and 14 bronze medals. One of the bronze medals there, the four by 100 meter uh, relay for the men. So Nigeria came, you know, atop, on top of countries like Wales, South Africa, Northern Ireland, Malaysia, Jamaica, Jamaica, interestingly, uh, Kenya, and, and, and the likes. It's quite surprising for Nigeria to beat the likes of South Africa in such a competition because South Africans do well. I mean, when you look at uh, the Olympic Games, Commonwealth Games, World Athletics, you look at the fact that there are other sports that can bring you medals. And the South Africans, like the Australians, like the Chinese, like the Russians, like the English or the British, will always, and Americans always try to do well, you know, in, in a lot of other sports apart from the ones that are, they are strong in. So um, I think the, the key for the Nigerian contingent here is the medals won in a lot of other sports, you know, like the long jump, uh, the powerlifting, excuse me, weightlifting, apart from the athletics. Um, we need to harness. This country is brimming with talent. And that has been the message, you know, um, by many Nigerians in the social, social space, that the country is brimming with talent and all the authorities need to do is provide a support, enabling environment and a platform for the young people who are brimming with talent to, to aspire and to, you know, perspire. And of course, to win medals for the country, when they, when they win medals for the country, it brings glory uh, to the country. Not to forget, if the NUS dollars are abroad, they will have their remittances and the economy will grow, will be stronger. So policies need to be put in place for sport. Uh, I'm, I mean, I, I'm near to see a comprehensive sport policy that is taking advantage of the brimming talent we have in the country to make Nigeria uh, one of the the forces to reckon with as far as the Olympic Games are concerned. And, and the country can do it. Nigeria has the population, it has the size, it has the people, the skill, the talent, the resources to do this, you know, and the country can do this. So congratulations to Team Nigeria, uh, placing seventh at the Commonwealth Games with 12 gold medals, nine silver, and 14 bronze. 
and of course bringing glory uh, to the country. Let's move on. Um, of course, uh, the appointment of Fessus Kayamu as a spokesman of the um, APC presidential campaign organization um, elicited reactions amongst a lot of people in the country. And uh, the equal appointment of Dino Melai as the co-spokesman for the PDP presidential, uh, Atiko presidential campaign, of course, got people talking and saying, ah, it's probably going to be Fessus Kayamu versus uh, Dino Melai. But we can't forget that Daniel Boala is also somewhere in there as well. These are vocal individuals, and um, Fessus Kayamu didn't waste any time. He hit the ground running by appearing on a television program a day after his announcement was made uh, in that presentation by the party officials and the presidential uh, ticket uh, holders to the president. Um, so, Kayamu has been talking. He said some things in an interview um, some days ago, <laughs> and uh, one of which was um, that Nigerians should go beg Asu or plead with Asu to, um, you know, to, to go back to the classroom while negotiations are still on. And he asked questions. Some, some would say important questions. Some felt these questions were not really necessary. He said, how can Nigeria fund the demands of Asu, the money Asu is asking for? And he's saying, do people expect the country to borrow, all right, to borrow uh, to, to pay Asu? Do people expect Nigerians to borrow to pay Asu is what he was asking. And he looked at the income the country has. He says, we're looking at 20.1 trillion naira. And if you want to look at the total package for Asu, just for this agreement to, to be fully implemented, you have 1.1 uh, trillion naira. That is almost, uh, that's more than 18% of the total income of the country, if you do a math, if it's 20.1 trillion naira. So what Kemo was saying is it's going to take 18% of the nation's income to give to one group, and then this same group is going to set, you know, how they receive it, the platform which they receive it, how they're going to be paid, and set a lot of other um, uh, criteria that must be followed before they go back to the classroom. So he asks, should Nigeria, should Nigeria borrow to pay Asu? Should Nigeria go broke uh, to pay Asu? And, some people didn't take that uh, lightly at all or didn't respond kindly. Well, Kayamo has been, has been in the news again, and he took to Twitter um, to make some statements, you know, on Saturday. Uh, he said that uh, the presidential candidate of the All Progressives Congress, uh, Shiva Jibola Metinubu, is prepared to improve on the legacies of uh, President Muhammad Buhari, is what he says. And I'll quote him here. He says, uh, quote, um, well, his tweet comes shortly after describing an online newspaper, the People's Gazette, as a purveyor of fake news. Yes, uh, is what he's saying. The People's Gazette, he said, they're a purveyor of fake news. Indeed, um, I mean, personally, I will agree with um, uh, with uh, Professor Kiamo. I mean, I've seen more than one story on that news site, and uh, I don't, I don't read them. I don't read them because I've, I, I've seen fake news being peddled on that site. And I've asked questions, right, like even in, in the office here, in the office here, my colleagues will know that I've always raised concerns about this. Now, is Festus Kiamo uh, talking about this because it's not favoring him or what? Personally, I've seen fake news. And when I see fake news, I call it out, you know, and it's wrong. But let's go back to what Festus Kiamo put on Twitter. He says, uh, quote, to put purveyors of fake, fake headlines out of business, this is our position. A, there are areas where PMB's government has done exactly well. Infrastructure, rail, agriculture, etc. Uh, our official ABAT, that's uh, Tinubu's handle, will continue with those revolutionary strides, but also seek to improve them. B, there are uh, areas of security challenges that have improved significantly. Example, farmer header clashes. Northeast insurgency, etc. He says Tinubu will review these situations and improve additional or employ additional strategies to maintain the momentum and consolidate the gains achieved in these areas. C. As for new areas of security challenges, example banditry and kidnappings in the Northwest, uh, official ABAT that's Tinubu is prepared to employ additional tools and tactics to complement the present work in progress in order to totally eradicate them if Nigerians graciously give him their mandate. All right, so um, what he's saying is that the headline that was carried by 
a news uh, paper, an online newspaper called uh, Gazette, People's Gazette, which he calls a purveyor of fake news is fake, where they said that Tinubu will run Nigeria exactly like Tinubu. And um, uh, I personally have um, had not some kind words for this, this, this platform uh, right here in the office. I mean, when we have our editorial meetings, and so I always insist that People's Gazette should be cut off and yanked off from uh, references. I mean, from time to time, they will run credible stories, but it's, it's uncalled for, you know, as a media outfit, and I do not know who, know who is behind uh, that paper. Um, so he's saying he never said Tinubu will run uh, Nigeria exactly like Buhari, uh, like the Gazette says. It says uh, Tinubu will improve on Buhari's legacy. But of course, some people still responding to his tweet have not, uh, uh, still, are not still taking Kayamo's words, you know, and saying even if you know, they didn't quote you well or they misquoted you. Um, we still do not want or do not believe that um, uh, the country should be run anything uh, like how Buhari has run the country. Uh, we don't even want to hear that name, you know, is what uh, people are saying to Festus Kiyama. His Twitter handle has been really busy, really busy, given, you know, um, uh, comparison between when... Uh, uh, Tinubu was governor, and before he became governor, for instance, he put out a, a picture on his um, uh, Twitter account, Oshodi, in 1999, and then Oshodi currently, uh, and he says, let's see Adamawa and Anambra 1999 uh, till date, talking about uh, Obi and Dati. All right, so um, his tweet on this issue of um, uh, fake news, where he says, uh, you know, he will, uh, Tinubu will, will improve, on uh, um, uh, Buhari's legacies, it's generated more than 1,000 reactions and 1,000 comments. I just want to read a few of the comments there, uh, the ones that can be put on air, and you can check it out for yourself. Uh, someone replied, what about areas where PMB did not do well, like economy, security, and corruption? Uh, another person says, uh, so the evil you and your Buhari brought upon Nigeria isn't enough for you. Uh, you won't be able to top it. Don't worry. It's your time. Uh, another person says, uh, the same fellow asks for Nigerians. Okay, I'm just going to leave this one. Uh, so th these are some reactions. People are not really happy at all. And whether there was fake news or whether he, he said it was going to continue a legacy or whether he says he will improve upon it, um, people are not uh, really, really taking that too kindly. So anyway, um, we'll, we'll monitor that situation. Of course, uh, Fessus Kiamo will always be in the news. Uh, for, uh, for, for the reason of being not just a minister, but also, uh, you know, of being uh, the spokesman for the uh, Tinubu campaign. I mean, he has his work cut out as far as um, uh, <laughs> speaking for this presidential candidate is concerned. I mean, yeah, an example here, he's given uh, a sort of a, a reply, reply to say, this is what I said. Oh, and the man is actually right, you know, to say he didn't say that... Uh, uh, um, Tinubu will continue the legacy, but actually he said that Tinubu will improve um, on the legacy of uh, uh, um, Buhari. All right, but even at that, he still has his work cut out because people are not happy um, as far as uh, the performance of this administration is concerned. I mean, you have uh, people struggling with economic issues, you know, struggling with uh, insecurity. You have, you know, the power situation is not helping businesses. The Naira is struggling against the U.S. dollar, and a lot of other, you know, uh, challenges. So he has his work cut out as far as uh, talking and speaking for Tinbu is concerned. Now let's move over to another one. This happens to be a one million match uh, for Obi Dati in Nasarawa State. Um, we've had several one million matches for uh, Obi before even Dati came in, and uh, this is the latest. I was speaking to a friend or colleague of mine who said, you know what, um, <laughs> Obi doesn't need to spend any money. He's not even spending any money for campaign, not spending money for billboards, not spending money for rallies while the other candidates are spending money. And so it's quite interesting, this Obi phenomenon going around in Nigeria ahead of the 2023 elections. Nigeria has never seen anything like this. Let's go over to Nasara State and just catch a bit of a feel of what happened in that one million match for Obi Dati in Nasara State. <laughs>
All right, so that's a bit of it. Um, OB mania, dirty mania is still in the air. People are, uh, you know, going out voluntarily, you know, just uh, organically, no, no organization, no meetings, no planning, no, uh, you know, advertisement to say, oh, please, we need people. People themselves are putting themselves together to form groups, to form think tanks. You know, the only problem I have is that um, uh, the, the Electoral Act is quite clear. Uh, about um, when campaigning uh, is meant to begin, and it's not in the campaign period, you know. So um, it's all the campaign campaign billboards. I'm sure the candidates in question can say, "Oh, well, they didn't put it up themselves. They didn't, uh, you know, they've not gone out to campaign themselves. These are people just doing it. So nobody can hold them liable." I think I've seen uh, one or two billboards uh, on Bola in in Lagos. Uh, this was ahead of the uh, APC presidential primary, Miloko, and all that. Um, uh, he would say, well, he didn't say anything about 2023 elections. He just said, let me look <laughs> So I'm sure they can get, get away with it. But this is nothing like Nigeria has ever seen before. Uh, you know, people moving out on their own. Some don't even know uh, where the Labour Party office is in their state. But just moving on the streets. Of course, there are not one million people there. But at least there are some people on the, on the, uh, on the road moving around. And the debates will keep on raging as to whether... The uh, uh, supporters of Peter Obi and uh, Dati on social media can muster a good number online. Um, of course, you know, the opponents of uh, Obi in this 2023 presidential campaign and their supporters have said, uh, well, um, that uh, his obedient supporters, like they're called, are only a Twitter crowd and they don't have a structure. Time will tell. It's going to be fascinating and interesting to see what are they able to prove, um, you know, the doubters wrong. All right. Anyway, my name is Kofi Bartels, and uh, we'll be back with more right here on The Breakfast. Of course, we have a look at what the papers are saying today with in-depth analysis. Opunabo in Kotaria joins us up next. Stay with us.